talk about a lot of things that are going to impact the rest of the West Coast that hasn't already been impacted. And I hate to say this, but the news continues not to be good. And if you look at the center portion of Rents.com, center column, look under the top, the Fukushima catastrophe, you'll see, if you scroll down there, lots and lots of very interesting headlines. I'm going to read just a few of them, then we're going to concentrate on one as we begin our conversation. Welcome back, Michael Collins. How are you? Oh, I'm just fine. I wish the news was better. But i got to tell you, yours is the go-to place to uh, uh, find out these new and just incredible things. And they can be backed up and multiply sourced from all over the place. Yeah. And yeah. when you think about how much all of us and the listeners, you know, uh, rely on the Pacific, uh, some, of the, uh, some of the headlines are... Really quite something. 20 million tons of Fukushima well, I, that's, debris. That's what I'm going to hit on here. Let me read a few oh, yeah. more real quick and thank uh, my colleague uh, Richard Wilcox over there who is in Tokyo who's been sending the, the best stories and I pull up a few and we flesh it out and it's, it is it's very thorough. Uh, here we go. Okay. The first story is, as you just heard Michael say, 20 million tons of Fukushima debris is getting closer to the West Coast. It's coming. It's coming here. 60% of the public oppose Japan's exporting of nuclear technology. Eh, not a surprise. Energy report skips the nuclear phase-out. That's a Japanese report. Utilities seek resumption of plutonium thermal power generation. Fukushima Medical University gave, interesting, potassium to its staff on 3-15-11. Why billionaire Paul Allen backed the pro-nuclear film Pandora's Promise and on and on. You can check out the stories, and they're all there. Uh, we cover the whole gamut of material for you in the center there. Now, this debris story, and when you click on that, you'll see a, a graphic, and it is graphic. Man, does it show a, a pile of stuff coming this way. A Russian ship, which is out, uh, I guess, north of Hawaii, something like that, uh, reported that they are seeing all kinds of things Floating. Uh, September 25th, uh, they, you know, this is September 25th, remember, 2011. Debris at that time was seen floating 3,000, 3,200 kilometers from Japan. All right? A Russian ship was there. They saw a television set, a refrigerator, a couple of other home appliances later on September 27th. We keep sighting every day things like wooden boards, plastic bottles, buoys from fishing nets, small and big ones, an object resembling a wash basin, drums, boots, and other waste. Now, that was uh, March 2011. And if you, you move forward on this thing, you'll watch where all this is going. Uh, in 2013, the Hawaiian coast was affected by uh, a number of sightings. Uh, the people there were seeing things move past, and it's headed toward Actually, Northern California, Oregon, and Washington, and then up into B.C. pretty much. Tell us your take on all this. Oh, man. Jeff, we've talked about this. We broke this story. And the fact is, it's time to pay the Pacific Piper. This is not good. Now, people say, oh, no, well, you know, that's just stuff floating. How do you know it's hot? Well, there have been tests done through the Pacific that, you people can go see uh, on our website uh, under uh, our radiation food lab, Jeff. We actually have tests out of the Pacific, the Pacific water itself. And even though there was like uh, one test we just saw recently, even though there was a steadying in the amount of strontium-90 taken at a certain spot in the Pacific that it leveled out, it was still 10,000 times over where it should have been. Now, when you see that, that graphic is worth the price of admission. That is journalism in it, at its best. That really puts it to you. You see what's going on. But then you go, wait a minute. Uh, any other proof? I mean, it is a good graphic. Well, I sent Jeff, and I'm sure he'll make it available to you, and it's available at viralreporter.com and our, our, our latest comment from a gentleman in England named Richard. And he sent us, uh, a sea surface temperature map of anomalies in the Pacific that match exactly mm -hmm. the graphic mm -hmm. on Rents.com. Now that's scary because because what that the anomaly is the water's hotter. Now why would the water be hotter for in, in the exact area 
where the Sea of Goo is, why would it be hotter? I mean, is it possible that it's radioactive and the actual amount of radiation is uh, exuding heat from its uh, decay? You know, radiation gives off heat when it decays. Sure. So uh, it, if that's the case, then look at the size of it. I mean, if you look at that illustration, you know, it, it nails it. It's from, it's from the Japanese coast almost all the way to North America. And you know what? People are like, okay, then, then what? So what? It's in the water. Well, how many <laughs> folks eat fish? But we've already talked about this, but this is more important than ever that people understand this, mm-hmm. is the, 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 in various studies that we've uncovered and, and published about, a couple of the findings show this. You have a higher concentration of radioactive material in the very top layer of the ocean. The very top layer of the ocean is the one that is exposed to wind. The wind makes oceans choppy. Storms come, make a whole bunch of mist go in the air, and according to really excellent tests out of the United Kingdom, radioactive mist can go as far as 200 miles inland as measured by the English government, British government, 200 miles inland. This was wow. measured in uh, mm-hmm. the Irish Sea mm-hmm. on the west coast of Wales. Mm-hmm. Now, if anybody knows that in the British Isles there, the Irish Sea has Ireland to the west there, so it does act as a massive barrier to the full brunt of the, Pacific, uh, of the Atlantic's fury. Mm-hmm. So the kinds of mist that you would see in the Irish Sea off the Welsh coast that blew in 200 miles, and nothing compared to what we have here. And we know the mechanism that this looking to be actually warm, if not hot, on that image, uh, Jeff, uh, uh, put together by a, uh, 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 intelligence, uh, gr- uh, affiliated, uh, private sector industry uh, corporation, this this image actually shows a, a, an, a an area in the Pacific that has got to be the size of California and Nevada put together. That is many degrees over the temperature of the ocean. Yeah, it's it, it's too hot. It, it's not. It's not supposed to be that hot, unless there yeah. was some volcanism underneath it. But there's not because it's moving apparently. And oh, like that volcanism yeah. couldn't account for that. No, fifteen but, fifteen uh, miles, fifteen kilometers an hour, I think is what. No, fifteen. It's running at fifteen miles an hour on average. That's how fast. You know what we know? Toothbrushes, me, socks, it, pants, you name it, everything. Oh yeah. Everything you could want. Now, we know a lot of people have gotten detectors, but i got to tell you, it's up to the people who listen to this program to step up and get this material when it comes and uh, make sure to protect yourself by wearing rubber gloves and uh, using face masks and, and not just getting it everywhere. But the fact is you've got to treat anything like this as if it were a hazardous substance. If you've got any brains about it, and then you uh, get it to somebody you know who's got a detector, detect it, film it, Put it on YouTube. Tell us about it. You know, anybody can do this. you got to step up to do it. I'll tell you, the, the, the way the graphic shows and the way this heat image shows, it's following that Kuroshio current, Jeff, that comes right off of Japan. Yeah. And one might think, now, wait a minute. You mean it's taken all that time for this super hot mass of things to come across the Pacific? Well, i got to tell you something. Uh this thing has been going on for an excess of two years, and while the the vast majority, the massive amount of it is still to get to us, we've had faster moving amounts of radiation impact the West Coast, absolutely, and British Columbia. And that comes in the form of, you have this radioactive, uh, uh, we know that the water has, we know that millions and millions and millions of tons of Pacific seawater has been heavily irradiated. We know that the University of Davis did a peer-reviewed, superb report on the existence of a thing called buckyball, which is like a a geodesic uh, uh, spherical thing that holds multiple amounts of uranium, 
uh, isotopes in uranium is the, is the basis for most of the fuel in uh, the Fukushima reactors. We know that buckyballs can just hammer away across the Pacific, and according to UC Davis, after a full year of uh, recognizing them, analyzing them, having them in the laboratory, measuring their ionization potential, they hadn't gone down at all. So that this thing could be out there and it might change tomorrow. The actual uh, uh, heat print that it's leaving that the satellites are picking up, Jeff, but i got to tell you something. What we're faced with is the great unknown, and uh, there are just a very few sites that you can get enough of the information that it's got any sense about you. You can put it together and go, ah, this is what's going on. This is the single most serious environmental man-made disaster in the history of civilization. I agree. All right. We've got to pause there, Michael. You just summed it up. I've said it before, and you just said it again, and it is. It is what it is. 400 tons a day, admittedly, of groundwater that is highly radioactive being dumped into the Pacific. This has gone on for, what, not two years now, right? And it keeps going out into the ocean. Dilution is not the solution. Remember that. It doesn't work that way. Tsunami debris coming from Japan, uh, primarily the Sendai area and the power plant area, of course, coming toward the West Coast. This is uh, not good. It's been landing already in B.C., as you know, in Washington State. There have been things. There was a dock that floated up on shore, a big concrete dock, and other things as well. Okay, um, where do you want to go next with this? Well, you know, the uh, thing is that the, the conservative way of thinking about one's diet and how to how to handle this if one wants to just think about themselves and not think about all the beautiful sea creatures that are suffering because of this and the uh, uh, mass well, beachings of like ring seals with lesions yeah, of the yeah, things that look yeah. like uh, they are radiologically uh, caused. Induced, think, yeah. It, it very much reminds me of the Gulf of Mexico and the catastrophe there from Corexit and what they've done to the environment. They, all the species in the Gulf, the whole thing has been just wrecked. Just wrecked. And the thing is, if you want to think selfishly, which one shouldn't, but if you want to think selfishly, say, you know what, I don't need anything out of the Pacific. They're right. I'm done with that sushi, and man, I'm staying away from tuna. Well, okay, but are you eating jello? Do you brush your teeth? Because the fact of the matter is, what we're also seeing impacted, and we've covered this since our very first round of testing, Japanese seaweed is that seaweed and kelp has been, uh, is, like a, is like a sponge for this stuff. And so it collects and it becomes, uh, it, it ionizes. Now, I'm going to tell you something. When you, when you go to detect food with a, a really sensitive instrument like the Inspector Nuclear Radiation Monitor, which can detect gamma, of course, but also alpha and beta. The fact of the matter is, if you detect something significantly over background because of the food, and you know from what the food is exposed to, and what how it, it interacts with the earth, how much potassium-40 it sucks up into it, because, for example, coffee is very hard to detect because it's so filled with potassium-40 that it it uh, comes in higher than background consistently unless it's really bad coffee. So, uh, But the thing is, there's this stuff out there called carrageenan, and we've talked about this before, Jeff, but we went out this week, and I, I it's went in to, It's in so many products. Yeah, that's amazing. It's in almost everything that needs to retain moisture. I mean, they take the... The, the, one of the qualities of seaweed is that uh, it retains moisture. It, it, uh, it's pliable. And so they take this stuff and they put it into jello, they put it into bread, uh, they put it into your toothpaste because you've got paste and you want it to stay pasty or not dry out. Well, we went and got some uh, 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 jello mixed and actually South African of origin. And it was uh, 25. 0.9% higher than background and careful measuring with hmm. it in its mm -hmm. container. Hmm. Now, we went this all on our website. It's uh, a radiation food lab. It's all there, photos, the whole thing, the 
the name so of the So what you're saying, there's there's carrageenan in the South African Jello. Yes, and, and it's sourced obviously carrageenan. Most of it comes from from Japan. That's that's the implication. Ah, but there's the rub. What is there's the rub? Actually, a lot of carrageenan around the Horn of Africa, where South Africa is. Oh, really? It right. would yes. It would make sense to get your seaweed from there. However, as we know, uh, mm-hmm. with like the latest battle with the Chinese over solar panels, how they'll sell them for, according to the U.S. government, sell them for less than cost so they can monopolize the market. <laughs> One can imagine mm-hmm. that that kind of business practice takes place uh, uh, possibly uh, with the same kind of thing with seaweed. But let's just assume that it is uh, Japanese or seaweed from uh, uh, the Asian area. Twenty five percent higher than background is very significant, and yeah, we were we returned it. And it's the problem with returning something like this. There's nothing wrong with it. You can see looking at it, and this was some Tony Health Food store, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and uh, you know they go, "Is anything wrong with it?" And what are you going to say? 